welcome back to another video. Today in this video we're going to take a look at the Derwent Graphitint pencils. They are a tinted water soluble pencil and they have been out for quite a long time. I believe that they were released back in 2008. I had these on my wish list because I was really intrigued by them and I wanted to be able to try them out. A really sweet subscriber did send me this set so thank you so so much for sending these out to me. I really really appreciate it. I'm really excited to be able to try them out and I have not opened these yet. I'm going to do all of that today in this video so y'all are going to get my first impressions. We are going to swatch out all of the colors and see what I think of them. If you check the description box down below you will find links down there for my Etsy shop, my email list, my Facebook group and my patreon if you would like to support me there I also now have channel membership you can find more information out about that by clicking the join button down below the video so let's go ahead and first just take a look at the tin I think the tin is absolutely beautiful and I do know that this set comes with very earthy type colors but there is a really beautiful selection of colors in this set and we're going to take a look at that today because we are going to be swatching these it does say here tinted water soluble graphite pencils this is the 24 count and then if we turn it over here on the back of the tin it gives us a little bit more information use dry derwent graphite tint provides just a hint of color but adding water transforms the tint into rich vibrant shades available in 24 color tints ranging from soft gray Grays, blues, and greens to glowing russets, plums, and browns. Derwent Graphitint is ideal for landscapes, animal studies, and portraits. Let's go ahead and remove the cover and take a look at these colors. Now I do first want to say my thought with these was that they are going to be a little bit like Derwent Ink Tents, and you all know how much I love my Derwent Ink Tents pencils. They are one of my favorites, right up there with my Holbeins and my Prisma colors. But the Derwent Ink Tents are one of my favorites just because they're they're so unique and they're so fun to play with. My first thought was that I could probably use these right along with my Derwent ink tents if I wanted to. I would have to check and see if the colors are the same or if we get different colors in this set than we get in the Derwent ink tents because I'm really not sure but I'm going to compare that and see. Let's go ahead and just take the plastic off here. And I grabbed my Derwent Ink Tents just because I was curious. I think it's probably easiest to check some of the grays or the names on the grays. This one is a cool gray and we don't have anything called cool gray in the Derwent Ink Tents set. So I don't think the colors are the same. I think they're probably different. I'm gonna have to get out my swatch after I swatch these and see how different the colors are. If the colors are all very different, I think that they would be a really good addition to add on to the colors that I have in my Ink Tents set. So we'll take a look at that further into the video. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at these pencils. So they say Derwent Graphitint on them. The color name is right here on the end. And then they also have a color number. And as with all of the Derwent pencils, they do have the color dipped tip. And then they have the little silver ring right here at the top. These do have the gray barrels. They actually look like a little bit more of a silver. But as far as the circumference of the pencils, I believe they are the same size as most of the other Derwent colored pencils, which are going to be a little bit bigger in circumference than something like a Prismacolor. I went and grabbed a Prismacolor so that y'all could see the difference in the size, but you can clearly tell that the Derwent pencils are a little bit bigger than a Prismacolor. So when you first receive the pencils, this is what the lead is going to look like. Of course, it's going to have that flatter tip on it, and that is just to protect the pencils in shipping. But I do always suggest sharpening your new pencils when you first receive them. This way you can get the best performance out of them when you lay them down, use them in your coloring books or in any of your artwork. So I'm gonna hold these just a little bit closer so that you can take a look at the colors and what they look like laying in the tin. Now this is the 24 set and they do come also in a set of 12. The 24 set is the biggest set that you can get. As far as pricing goes, you can get the set of 12 for $19.19 .19 on Amazon or $20.95 on Blick. Or you can get this exact 24 set on Amazon for $37.49 and it is also the same price on Blick. I will have all of those links down in the description box below just in case you watch this video and decide you want to grab some of these for yourself. So many of you that have watched my reviews before, you know that I always like to test every set of pencils out in the pencil sharpener 
And this way, those of you that are looking to purchase any of the pencils you see in any of my reviews, you will know exactly which pencil sharpener to purchase and which one works best with the pencils that I'm reviewing. So I also like to test the pencils in here because I like to see how hard or soft the wood is. It sort of gives me an idea of the quality of the wood that the actual pencil is made with. If I were to put a Crayola in here, it's going to be very, very hard to turn this lever. And if I were to put something like a Prismacolor in here, it would be very easy to turn this lever on this pencil sharpener. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out, push the button, put the pencil in, and we are going to turn this. And as soon as it's done, it will stop. It's not too difficult to turn the lever, but it's not very easy to turn the lever either. And this is the beautiful sharp tip that the Doll 133 gave us. So let's try one now in my trusty jar link. Those of you that don't know, this model is not available anymore. I did do a video. They have a new model that is a replacement, and I would say that it's just as good as this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the upper right-hand corner in case you are looking for an electric pencil sharpener. But let's go ahead and take another one of the pencils and we are going to put this in here. It goes in very nicely. This pencil sharpener will sharpen anywhere from six millimeters to 12 millimeters. So it will most likely sharpen all of your colored pencils. So I'm just gonna very lightly push down. And it stopped. This one has always auto stopped for me. It is wonderful. And here is the tip that it gave us. This one here was sharpened with the jar link. And then the one here on the outside was sharpened with the doll. And you can see the one with the jar link. It gave us just a tad bit of a sharper lead. My pencils are all nice and sharp. But now we're gonna go ahead and swatch them. This is one of my swatch charts that is available in my Etsy shop. I will always have a link down in the description where you can get your swatch charts. This one is for 72, but of course, how many pencil sets come with only 24 colors? So we're just gonna use this one for now. So I'm just gonna swatch them in the order that they are inside the tin. This one is called Port. They go down very nicely. Now, like I said, I've never used these before, so I don't know what's gonna happen once I add the water and if the color is just gonna spread. I'm not sure if it's more important to have a little bit more color down there or a little bit less color. I'm gonna have to play with these just a little bit to see how they work. And I really wanna do that in a coloring book. So if you would like to see that, please let me know in the comments below. This one is called Juniper. Oh, that's a pretty color. It's kind of like a grayish purple. Then we have Aubergine. Let's go ahead and see what this one looks like. It looks like it's actually a darker shade of this color here. The next one is Dark Indigo. Those of you that have been watching my channel for quite some time, you all know how much I love Indigo. <laughs> It's just a beautiful, very dark, dark blue. I think this one says shadow. Some of the names on some of these pencils, the print where the name is, is a little bit smeared, but that's another gorgeous color. Next is steel blue, and I am gonna come back and add water to every one of these since they are meant to be used with water. I'm sure you can use them without the water as well but I believe they are a lot like the Derwent Ink Tents, where if you add water, it makes the color much more vibrant. And of course, we are going to see that here in a minute. This one is Ocean Blue. Oh, that's a gorgeous color. The teals are my absolute favorites. I bet this one is going to be beautiful once we add water to it. And I think when I add the water, I'm gonna do it like I did it with my Derwent Ink Tents, where I just do half of it with water. So this way we could see the difference in the color. This one is called Slime late green. It's just a really beautiful dark green. Next is green gray. This one looks more like an olive green. This one is meadow. Oh, I bet these two would look gorgeous together. I love greens like this. Oh, these are going to be so beautiful on some landscape coloring pages. Look at these colors and they go down so nicely on the paper. It looks like we have another one that is more like an olive green. This one is called ivy. These colors are going to be beautiful for your leaves and your trees. So this one looks like it's just a little bit darker than this one is. 
but these three together I bet would be gorgeous. Now I have Sage. That's a really gorgeous shade of brown. That's super pretty. That is so different looking. I'm just looking at that a lot closer. It looks darker in some places and then it looks like it has a little bit of orange in it in other places. That is so super cool. This next one is Chestnut and this one is doing the same thing. Oh how cool is that? I need to hold this a little closer to the camera so that y'all can see that. I guess the graphite is two different shades in the pencil. I don't know if y'all can see that but look how cool that is. Can you see the different shades in one pencil in both the sage and the chestnut? I've never seen a pencil do that. It must be that the graphite is just two different shades in the pencil. But you've got more brown over here and then over here it looks a lot more reddish orange. This next one is russet. I wonder if this one is going to look the same. This one feels a little bit scratchier than some of the others. Okay, it's starting to go away as I lay more color down. But that one is the same. These are going to be so fun to play with in a coloring book. I can't wait to try these out. And I think I'm going to go ahead and film it the first time I use these so that I could do it with all of you. This is another reddish brown and it's called Autumn Brown. This next one is Coco. There's a lot of really beautiful browns in here. And I did print my swatch chart on the Spring Hill paper so I just assumed that would be the best one to use. Since these pencils are okay to use with water or not with water, we'll have to see once we add the water, but the Spring Hill paper usually does pretty well. This one is coal brown. I'm wondering if I should have put a little bit more color down here with some of these for when I get ready to add the water. When I first started, I wasn't thinking that I was gonna just add water on one side. This one is called Storm. Then we have Warm Gray, and the grays aren't doing the same thing that the browns did. Those browns are super cool though. I'm wondering if they're supposed to be like that <laughs> or maybe that's just in my set because it almost looks like in these browns that this russet is sort of a mix of what should have been russet and then it has some of the color from the chestnut in it very very strange and it looks like the chestnut has a little bit of autumn brown in it if you have these pencils you'll have to let me know in the comments below if yours are the same way next I have midnight black well this is definitely not how I would have swatched them if I was putting them in order because <laughs> the white is going to end up being all the way at the end but that's okay. Then I have mountain gray. So most of these are going down rather nicely. It was only that one that had felt scratchy when I mentioned it but it went away. That's why I suggest sharpening all of your pencils because a lot of times if you get a scratchiness from a pencil or they feel a little scratchy in their initial lay down, it's a lot of times because you didn't sharpen your pencils first because they do always come with a wax film on them. This one is cloud gray, but they do always come with a wax film on them just to protect the cores of the pencils. And so you want to make sure that you sharpen your pencils and get all of that off of there so that when you go to use them in your coloring books or in your artwork, you're getting the best performance from your pencil and they're laying down nicely. Again, I think that says cloud gray. The writing is very close together. I'm gonna hold this really close. Hopefully y'all can see it, but that's what I mean by some of the names are a little bit hard to read on some of the pencils. This one is cool gray. Oh, that's a gorgeous shade of gray. It's very blue. That's a really blue gray. Super, super pretty. Definitely a cool gray. And then we have our white pencil. And of course they're just calling it white and I probably don't even need to lay this one down. <laughs> but I always like to. And that's going down really nice and that is actually super white. It's definitely way whiter than the paper. So I went ahead and added another layer of color over a lot of these. Now I should be able to use my water brush. I have my Derwent water brushes. I absolutely love these. And now I'm just going to go over each one of them and we're going to see how vibrant the color gets and I'm only going to do half. Oh wow. Look at the difference. Oh, I have a feeling I'm gonna love these as much as the ink tents. Let's go ahead and do the juniper. Oh, these are beautiful. Look at that color. I absolutely cannot wait to use these in a coloring book. I'm just really hoping they work really well right along with my ink tents. And the color does get darker and more intense, but I'm sure you can use these without the water if you wanted to do that. I do think though that the color, oh wow, look at that one. <laughs> it just stopped my train of thought because that was so beautiful. But I do think that the color on these does move around a little bit differently than on my ink tents, but not much. 
These feel a little bit closer to a watercolor, but look how beautiful and how nicely the color moves. And the pigment in the ink tents, they are an ink and these are graphite, so I believe that's the difference between the two. These colors are beautiful. I love that sage and the chestnut. Look at these gorgeous colors. And they're working beautifully with my water brush. I love these water brushes. Now the autumn brown. Oh, that color is gorgeous. Look at that red pop from this color now. And I am brushing my brush off to the side after I go over each color, so this way I don't bring one color into another. It's always nice when you swatch a pencil like this to make sure that you do do them half and half. So that way, if you decide that you want to use them without water, you know what the color is going to look like. So you do have both options with these, but I always love using pencils like these with the water. I know some people use the ink tents without water, but I can't imagine using them without water because like with these, it makes such a huge difference once you add the water. But these do feel more like a watercolor pencil to me. And then let's just go ahead and go over the white, even though we won't be able to see it. <laughs> Stay consistent. <laughs> okay, so here's all the gorgeous colors. I love them. We get this color here called Port. It's sort of like a reddish cranberry type color. And then we get these two colors here that are very, very similar. They both look like grayish purples. We get a blue, and then we get a blue with a green in it. Here we have this ocean blue, which looks more teal, and then a steel blue, which looks like a very dark grayish blue, slate green, which is a grayish green. And then this one here is actually called green gray. It does look green and gray at the same time, but it's more like an olivey green gray. And then we get this meadow and the ivy, which these are very close to one another. I'm not sure that I would really need both of these colors in this one very small set. I would assume that they could have done something a little bit different here because once I add water, I can actually thin that out as much as I wanted to and I could probably make this color look very much like this color. But then we have sage, which is a beautiful color, more like a brownish green. Chestnut, absolutely beautiful, as well as russet. Then we get this gorgeous autumn brown. This is a reddish brown, very dark and intense. That's beautiful. Coco, another very pretty color. So we get a lot of browns in this set. Here's one called Coal Brown. So that looks exactly like what it says, Coal Brown. And then we get some grays. So we have Storm, which is a gray, and then we have our Warm Gray. And then of course we get a black. Our black looks like a very dark gray though. And I did lay on this side quite a bit of layers down there to get it pretty thick so that when I added water, I could really see what the color is. But by the time you add the water, it does look more like a gray. Then we have mountain gray and cloud gray and then cool gray. So we do get quite a bit of grays in this set, but that's pretty much the purpose of this set. We get a whole lot of earthy tones and these would be great for your coloring pages where you're coloring a page with landscapes or something like that. I mean, really, I would think that you could use it on any page you wanted to, even just with these colors. So I went ahead and grabbed my Derwent Ink Tense swatch chart. I think turning it upside down like this will give us a better idea because a lot of these colors are browns and grays and so we can and see how many of these browns and grays in the ink tent set will actually match up. But if you look at the swatch chart, you can tell by looking at this when I added the water on these that they do seem much more like a watercolor in the way that they move. These are just very unique in that they just don't do that. It's more like the ink of the pencil is being blended out when you add the water and just kind of mixing with the water and creating a much more intense, vibrant color. So if I look at this one called Chinese ink, it does look similar to the Midnight Black, but this one looks darker. I'm seeing a lot more choices in browns in this set here than in the ink tents. In the ink tents though, if I wanted to combine these with this set, I'm seeing a lot of lighter browns here that would actually look very beautiful combined with some of the browns in this set here. And I kind of wish that we maybe had a yellow in this set, but that's where some of these from the ink tents would probably come in really nicely if you wanted to use the two sets together. Now, when I use them in a coloring book, I am going to be bringing in my ink tents because I really do want to see the difference between the ink tents and these. 
and see what happens when I use them together. So maybe I can go ahead and test that out in a video in a coloring book as well. But as far as the greens, the greens and the ink tents look very different from the greens that you get in this set. We do have this leaf green right here. It does look similar, but it looks like it comes right in between these two. It's not an exact copy of the color. And then some of these other olivier greens, none of them are exact either. I do have this color here called oak that is pretty close to the coal brown, but they're not exactly the same either. So I think what I have in mind for these may actually work out really, really well because that was initially why I wanted these because you're only getting 24 colors. I wanted another set that I could use them with. And so I definitely wanna try that out and see. You know what, let's go ahead and try that out in this video. I'm gonna go ahead and try to mix my ink tents with these and then add water and we're gonna see what happens. So I grabbed another sheet of the Spring Hill paper and I've got my ink tents. Let me just choose some colors here that I could maybe put together and they would look really, really pretty. So I'm thinking that I wanna choose some browns from here and then use my ink tent set for my lighter colors and then see what they would look like once I put them together. So I really, really love these greens and I know that so many of you that watch my videos love coloring leaves. So maybe we'll do some greens with some yellows. Maybe I'll try the ivy and then see what that looks like with the Sicilian yellow. And let's try to blend those together and see how the colors come together. And Sicilian yellow is one of my absolute favorite colors. Maybe I should add another color in with these and we could sort of do the blend test at the same time. I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab the green gray. So I have two of the graphitint and then I'm just using the one ink tense. And we're gonna see what happens. So this is my darkest color and then my mid-tone, and then we're going to attach the Sicilian yellow to that. And these feel very different going down on the paper, very, very different. If I had to describe them, I would say that the ink tents going down on the paper is much more buttery than these are. They just have a whole different feel. But I think I'm gonna try starting at the lightest color and then working my way up. And then we're gonna move this color right into the other color. Wow, they work so nicely together. So now that I am doing it all together on this paper, the ink tents do move a little bit different th differently than these, and these do feel more like I'm using a watercolor pencil than when I'm using the ink tents. Like I said earlier, the ink tents just sort of move around, and it's like the water is actually blending with the ink that is the pigment of the pencil but it seems as though they are doable to be able to combine the colors from both different sets. I feel like if these were ink tense colors, then the color would be much more vibrant and stay a lot more the same rather than move around the way that it did. So maybe I should try one more. I think that maybe I wanna do a much darker color on the top and use the ink tense. So I think I'm gonna go with the dark purple and I'm gonna, or maybe not. Maybe I'll go with the dus dusky purple, I think that says. So we're gonna go with this one and then the port. I think I'm just gonna use the two and test again how they blend together and how different they look. I don't know, maybe I will use the dark purple. Yeah, let me go with the dark purple. So the dark purple and the port. So I just had to sharpen my dark purple. I think that is one color in the entire set that I've probably never used. Interesting. <laughs> So let me go ahead and lay down the dark purple. Oh, that is super, super dark. And then I'm going to lay down the port. Let's go ahead and add water now. So remember the port is the graphitant and you could see how the color just sort of spreads and lightens up. And then I get into the ink tents and look at that. <laughs> What a difference, and that's why the ink tents are so unique from any other pencil. Of course, I could move it around a little bit more, maybe even go up a little bit higher and sort of spread the color, but initially that port is going to definitely look more like a watercolor. And I just think the Derwent ink tents are much more pigmented. It's just a whole different type of pencil. Like I said, it's an ink, whereas these are a graphite. But either way, I think that they would work beautifully using them together with one another. This color combination, these two colors together, that is gorgeous. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope that it was helpful. If you're trying to decide whether or not you wanna pick up this Derwent Graphitint set of 24 or even the set of 12 to try out, I hope that this helped you to make 
your decision. As you can see, they do work really beautifully with the Derwent Ink Tents. And like I said, that was my whole intention of wanting this set because it does only come with 24 or 12 colors. And of course, you can use just 24 colors on a coloring page, but they don't come with any lighter colors. They're just really meant to do pages where you're doing some type of landscape or maybe animals, and they are wonderful for that purpose. But it's always fun to have other colors to be able to add in to the sets that you have. But I'm glad I was able to do this video a little bit differently and compare these to the Derwent Ink Tents and see how they would work with them. I think I found that they do work together beautifully, and I am going to try it in a coloring book. If you would like to see that, please let me know below. If you have any questions about these pencils or about anything that you've seen in the video, let me know in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring, bye.